Okay, brothers and sisters in Christ, I said in the other video that about the one world government and about the mark of the beast, that this alone to show anybody that the Bible is indeed the word of God. But I want to get this straight. All the prophecies in the Bible will be fulfilled with 100% accuracy. It's for sure to happen as if it already happened. But I want to say this. There's a special... Israel is very special. Israel is the number one evidence that the Bible is true. Because of what they went through. They were cast to the four corners of the earth. They were butchered. They were killed. You name it. Like, after the stuff that Hitler did. Hitler did his very best to eliminate and to annihilate the Jew. But yeah, God's promises were sure. That he'd bring them back. But God prophesied and he predicted their history before it happened. What he said was going to happen to them happened exactly word for word, line upon line. Exactly as he stated. I want to get into this. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 64 Then the Lord will scatter you among all peoples from one end, from one end of the earth to the other end. There you shall serve other gods which neither you nor your fathers have known wood and stone. And among those nations you shall find no rest nor shall the sole of your foot have a resting place. But there the Lord will give you a trembling heart, failing eyes, and anguish of soul. Your life shall hang in doubt before you. You shall fear day and night and have no assurance of life. In the morning you shall say, Oh, that it were evening. And at evening you shall say, Oh, that it were morning because of the fear which terrifies your heart and because of the sight which your eyes see imagine this is exactly what happened you can go back in history and see that this was literally fulfilled and then if you, and also yeah Deuteronomy chapter 4 okay right here Deuteronomy chapter 4 right here twenty six Deuteronomy chapter four verse twenty six I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that you will soon eagerly perish from the land which you cross over the Jordan to possess you will not process your days in it but you will be eagerly destroyed and the Lord will scatter you among the peoples and you'll be left few in number among the among the nations where the Lord will drive you then if we go to the book of Hosea the book of Hosea it's right after Daniel Hosea chapter 9 verse 17 my God will cast them away because they did not obey him and they shall be wanderers among the nations they shall be wanderers among the nations the Jews were wandering everywhere they went they were not welcomed you name it this is what I'm trying to show that God predicted this right to the precision this is exactly what happened this is undeniable. You cannot deny it. This is what happened. But I'm saying the Jews are very special. Because they should have been destroyed. It's a miracle that they're even alive today. That God promised that he'd bring them back and he brought them back. That's what we're going to get into now. He did not just say that I'm going to scatter you to the four corners of the earth. But also I'm going to bring you back. You can go into Ezekiel. Chapter 11 verse 17 therefore say thus says the Lord God I will gather you from the peoples assemble you from the countries where you have been scattered and I will give you the land of Israel I will give you the land of Israel 
it's remarkable. Like the scripture after scripture after scripture talking about God casting them to the four corners of the earth and bringing them back. And that's exactly what happened. That's it. I want to show you something in Jeremiah. You can even talk. You can even do this too. Jeremiah chapter uh, thirteen. Is it Jeremiah thirteen? Or the sixteen right here? Yeah. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord lives who brought up the children of Israel from the land of Egypt. But the Lord lives who brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands where he had driven them. For I will bring them back into their land, which I gave to their fathers. Now that's amazing. You know why it says the land? It also says the land of the north, and it includes all countries, because at a time in history, Russia refused to release the Jews. But yeah, God said something; He means it. And the time came when Russia gave up the Jews. Okay, yeah, right here, Jeremiah chapter thirty-one. I'll start from verse thirty-five. Thirty-one, verse thirty-five. Jeremiah chapter thirty-one, verse thirty-five. Thus says the Lord who gives the sun for a light by day, the ordinance of the moon and the stars for a light by night. Who describes the sea and its waves roaring? The Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinance depart from before me, says the Lord, then the seed of Israel shall also cease from being a nation before me forever. Thus says the Lord, if heaven above can be measured, and the foundation of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that the city shall be built for the Lord from the tower, you see, which is impossible. Nobody can measure uh, the heavens which means there will always be a Jew living on the face of the earth. And then if you go to uh, about Jerusalem, at this time when it was written, this would have been a ridiculous statement to make. But yet, everything in Jerusalem is center center of uh, world attention. It's a burdensome stone for everybody, for all the nations. But also in Amish chapter 9, verse 14, Look at this. Amish chapter 9 verse 14. I will bring back the captives of my people Israel. They shall build the waste circles and inhabit them. They shall plant villages and drink wine from them. They shall also make gardens and eat fruit from them. I will plant them in their land and no longer shall they be pulled up from the land I have given them says the Lord your God, regardless of what the United Nations says or whoever. God says they shall never be pulled up again. <coughs> yeah. Zechariah. That's, that's where I was bringing you guys to. Before that, I want to talk about this too. Chapter 3. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 9. For then I will restore to the people a pure language. Because when they got cast, when they got cast to the four corners of the earth, they lost the Hebrew language. Because for you to restore something, you had to have it in the first place. So God restored that language. There was a guy that came in 1800 something, and he restored the Hebrew uh, language. Prophecy after prophecy of the Jews. And God, and God's not done with them yet. He's going to continue his plan with them during the. His, he's going to. He's going to start focusing his attention upon them during the, the tribulation period. But Zechariah chapter 12, verse 3. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavenly stone for all peoples. All who would have it away will surely be cut in pieces. Through all nations of the earth are gathered against it. 
You see? And plus, I, I can like I can go on, ladies and gentlemen, about uh, the Jews building their third temple. They're getting ready to rebuild their temple, and that was all prophesied in the Bible as well. You can read about the temple in Second Thessalonians. The, the Antichrist is going to go in it. Okay, wait. Sec yeah, I'll read it to you. Second Thessalonians. Let me see here. Okay, that's first. Okay, Second Thessalonians right here. Okay, right here. I got it. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. The Antichrist is going to go into the Jewish temple. The temple will be rebuilt in Jerusalem. And if you go to Revelation, it talks about it as well. Revelation chapter 11. Right here. Then I was given a a reed like a measuring rod and the angel stood saying rise and measure the temple of God the altar and those who worship there like I can go on and on and yet that's exactly what's happening today and Israel belongs to the Jews Israel is just not a country it's a people a race of people because God said to Abraham as far as your eye can see, left and right, I, the land that you see, I give it to you and to your descendants forever. <laughs> you would have thought it was crazy. Because Abraham was like, what, 80-something or something? I forget how he was really old. He did not even have kids at the time. And yet God's saying, I'm going to have this. My descendants are going to have this. And yet, he said, the land that you see, I give it to you and to your descendants forever. How long is forever? Forever is forever. It doesn't say I give the land that you see, I give it to you and to your descendants till your enemies kill you and wipe you off of the face of the map or until someone takes it from you. No, that's not gonna happen. And God had the foreknowledge. He said, I give it to you and you shall have it forever. And everything that is described in the scriptures are happening right before our very eyes. That's why Jesus said, I tell you, before it happens. So that when it happens, you may believe. I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna tell you the future before it happens. I'm gonna describe what what's gonna happen. So that when it happens, you will have to acknowledge that I am the true God, and that the holy scriptures are indeed my holy word. And that's exactly the proof. Bible prophecy is un unrefutable proof that God exists. And the Bible is his, is and the Bible is his revelation the humanity prophecy after prophecy after prophecy has been fulfilled right to the precision to exact detail word for word that's why it's, it's amazing and these things had to originate from outside of time because it's history written down before it takes place you're going to be seeing it now they're going to be rebuilding the Jewish temple in Jerusalem and all the other things about Isaiah 17, about Damascus shall be wiped off the face of the map. You name it. It was all in the Bible way before it even happened. This is God showing people that he is the only true God. Because no one else has ever predicted the future and see to it that it was carried out. And God's going to see to it that he watches over history. And that history unfolds exactly as he said it would. Like the former things that he said, he saw to it that they came to pass, and they came to a pass to exact detail, word for word, as he said it would. So he's going. So the remaining things that he also said will also come to pass to exact detail with 100% accuracy, exactly as the remaining things did. And the Bible is over 80%. The Bible is one fourth prophecy, and over 80% of Bible prophecy has already come to pass. If that much has come to pass, <laughs> that would get my attention, and it does. That's why I'm fascinated with Bible prophecy, and this is all i got to say, and uh, God bless you all.